Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be making this photosphere. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also click that like button. And also go ahead and share this video as well. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training and you'll find that on my own website and also over on Amazon. Okay, let's get to it. To create this photosphere inside of Photoshop Elements, we need a whole bunch of pictures in here. I have a little image right there. There we go. Basically a collection of little thumbnails of your images. Now I'll show you how to do this. On the Macintosh version, there is a tool for doing this for making a contact sheet and then adjusting that. I'm not really happy with that tool. And also it's not available on the Windows version. So I'll show you how to do this without the use of that tool. Also, as you notice over here, I have the center centered on four pictures. You can either do it this way or you can center on one picture right in here. I'll show you how you do both of those. It's really just a difference in how you do your basic layout when you're first setting things up. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can create this photosphere. Now the first thing we need to do is to create all of our images, our thumbnails, and also set up our basic page. Let's start with our page first. Let's go up here to File, New, and blank file and I'll be setting this up at a width of 6 inches by a height of 6 inches and 300 pixels per inch. This is a square image and there we go. We can then zoom in on this just a bit like that or even fill a screen. There it is. Now here is where you make the determination if you want to have one picture centered or four centered with the intersection in the center. It's really just where you place your guidelines. If you want to have four in the center with the intersection dead center, as I had in my first example, it's real easy to be pulling guidelines at your one inch marks, and that's easy to do. Just go up here to View, come down to New Guide, set it for Vertical, and then we'll put in our first position at one inch. There it is. Same thing again, New Guide, and set this at two inches. Same thing again, New Guide, and three inches. Same thing again here, new guide at four inches, and then finally, new guide at five inches. Now if you use this basic layout, you'll end up with your images with four images in the middle and the intersection of those four images as the absolute center. So that's what you do if you want to have it the way I had in my original opening image. Let me just bring that back up again here quickly. And there we go. So these four images like that as the center with the intersection centered. That's one way to do that. Now if you want to have these with one picture in the center, we'll do this video, one picture in the center. The only difference on the whole technique is just this first layout. Everything else is exactly the same. I'm just going to take these and let's just clear our guides. Clear guides. Now I want to have the guides this time offset by a half inch. So go up to view new guide will start with 0.5 that's a half inch there we are and then view new guide 1.5 and again view new guide 2.5 and then view new guide 3.5 view new guide 4.5 and then view new guide 5.5. Now this will give you one picture centered instead of the four centered. Aside from that exactly the same trick. Okay we have our basic layout set now we need to do our thumbnails and for the thumbnails you're going to need a whole bunch of pictures. Here we go I have a whole lot of pictures right here. I have 48 pictures of these cats and this exactly fills up the grid on my 6 by 6 if I have this thing set at the one inch marks. It's a little bit different here with this setup. We'll have it some duplications on the edges, but that doesn't really matter. You're not even going to notice that. So start off with 48 different pictures just like this. I have these in a folder right there called Cat Photos. And that's very important to notice where your folder is. And then we'll use a tool up here, File, come down to Process Multiple Files, 
there we are and simply go to the source of your images this is that folder let me just scroll over here you can see that there's my cat photos folder if you're in the wrong location or there's no location just click on browse and browse to your location ignore where it says include all subfolders and then I want to copy this line up here easy way to just click on browse and then close that and that just selects the whole thing for you right click copy come down to destination right click and paste now don't check same as source if you do that it's going to overwrite the file names over the original file names and you won't be able to do any real file naming down here so same source and destination don't check that and you can then rename your files now in here choose rename files and you'll see the little drop down list here all kinds of things you can use as the first part of your file name and then stuff for the second part of your file name one little trick that doesn't really show here is you can click right there on that button just click on the button where it says document name click right there and then type in what you want for the first part so I typed in B just like that so using B down here there's my example B001 I have B it says none but actually it's doing the B just look at your example three digit serial number starting at one so it'll give me this as my first image and it will then name all the rest up to you know 048 or B048 reason I'm using B is that I used A for the example that I showed you at the beginning so I'm now using B so we don't get confused on this down here ignore this stuff if you're working with a Mac then just click Mac just like that I'm now sleeve on on Windows where it says image size click on resize images set the width here to inches and one inch set your resolution to 300 because we're using 300 for our page so one inch 300 ignore the height it'll just drop that in as it needs to constrained proportions means that it's going to adjust the height to match that width so make sure that, that is checked down here file type convert files to jpeg maximum quality and then everything else you can just ignore so there we go there's the basic settings again real fast your source and your destination are the same location this is your original location same location don't check that don't check that rename files just type right on the bar there and type in your letter and then three digit serial number resize images one inch resolution 300 convert files to jpeg maximum quality and you're all set to go go ahead and click on ok it's now going to do that conversion for us and see it working in right there it goes pretty fast it's just going to work through each one of those images as soon as that's done we'll have all 48 of those ready to go it goes pretty fast you can kind of see it there's up to the mid 30s already and there we go that's just about it and there we are let's now bring in our pictures go up to the file menu and open and there's my cat photos folder there's the a series this is what I used to do my first version that first example let's come down here to the B's and it begins right there and we'll find the last of the B series which is right down here so hold the shift key down and select all of those choose open it'll now open up all of these pictures for us so a whole bunch of them down here as you can see and there they go okay so there's all the pictures now it's a matter of just dragging these into this file now to make this easier I'm going to float this window I'll just grab that window right there float it out there now if you aren't set up for floating windows it's easy to do go up to the edit menu come down to preferences and general and right there make sure that allow floating documents in expert mode is checked and choose OK then you can dock it like that or grab the title bar and pull it out and float the window this way I can stick it over here someplace so I can see my whole area and I can grab my pictures now you want your most important picture in the middle we, we can rearrange this as we go I also want to have a middle line in here a horizontal line right at three to help judge where that first picture should be so I'll go up here to view come down to new guide set for a horizontal and I'll set this at three inches and choose OK so the center of my middle picture will be right there now I'll just come down here and grab one of these I'll just drag it in like that doesn't matter where it goes 
just put it right there and then close that one down. Now notice how it's, it's snapping right to these guidelines. To make sure it does that, go up to the window menu, come down to snap to, and make sure that all of those are checked. With all of those checked, it'll snap just fine for you. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab these and pull the pictures in one at a time. Let's put this one someplace else. It's not too close to that one. Right down there is good. And then when you find one you want for your center, just put that in the center position. Now it's going to snap to the center if you have that snap on. One last little trick here. It'll make this a lot easier if you have auto select on your layers set. So come down here to the bottom left hand corner, click on tool options, and hiding right there underneath all these windows is auto select. Make sure you check that. There you go. Now if you click on a picture, it will select that layer. Makes it real easy. I'm going to put this one someplace else because it's the same cat. Let's take this one and I'll put this one right over here just next to that. Notice how it snaps to that same position, so now lined up exactly. Okay, now it's just a matter of going through, that's kind of fun, going through and bringing the cats in and letting them snap into place. That one's out of focus, so I'll use that one as one of my edge pictures way out here, or it doesn't matter. And that's not a very good picture, so I'll just put that over corner up here. Now these corner pictures, these are not going to be included in the sphere. The sphere comes in like this. So you won't see your corners and not much of the ones next to that. But if you want to use this background, this will work. These will show up inside of that overall you know, picture background. So you still need to fill up the whole grid. It's now just a matter of coming in and placing in a lot of pictures and letting them snap into position. Now this can take just a, a few minutes. It's not a real long process, but it does take some time. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video and I'll just finish filling this up just by dragging my pictures in and then just kind of moving them around so that they're not too many of the same kind of picture stacked up one to another. Try to keep the colors somewhat separated. And just come in and fill in the grid with your pictures. As long as you're starting from that one center position, they'll all snap next to each other. It'll fill in real nicely. Okay, I'll go ahead and pause, and then I'll be right back here with the finished and filled grid. There we are. So far, so good. Now, at this point, if you're using this offset or half-inch set layout to get that centered picture right here, you'll need a few more pictures to fill in your grid. So let's go ahead and open up some more. Now these are just little half things they probably won't even show in the in the sphere, so they're not that critical. Let's go ahead and count. So you need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I need 14 more. So let's go back to open. And I'll just go here 1 and down to 14 right there. Choose open. In order to use these to fill in those last few spots. Now something else, when you get down to this little outer edge, sometimes it'll pop to the very center. Let me see if I can get it to do that. I'll grab this one, I'll pull it in here. Okay, it popped right to the center. You can see there the little control handles right around the center. We're on that layer, this layer here, but it's hiding in behind that. So if it pops to the center and doesn't show up on the edge, just use the cursor keys, the arrow keys, on your keyboard to move that back where you can see it like that and then you can drag it down into position. Just go ahead and I'll finish off these last few. Again that one's in behind so again the cursor keys I'll just push left till I can see it. There it is. And then drag that back down into position. Okay I'll go ahead now and I'll pause the video again now that I've shown you that last little bit in there. And I'll finish this up off screen and bring it right back up again with those last little pictures in place. And there we go. There's the whole picture grid filled in. Let's go ahead and just close those two down. We can now go ahead and dock that back in there again. Now you can hide the guys. Let's go up here to view and where it says guys, just uncheck that and that hides the guides. Now if you happen to see little white lines or something that not quite snapped together, you can kind of push them around until they fit exactly. If you're still having issues with that, just come down and change the background color here to a gray, a mid-tone gray. And they'll just kind of disappear. All right, there we go. That's the hardest part of the whole project is now done. Let's now make a copy of this whole thing. 
Actually, at this point, if you want to change your pictures around, move them around, now is the time to do it. You can rearrange your positions and so forth. I think this looks pretty good, though. I'll leave it as is. Notice also I now have that one picture right in the middle. So I have my centered picture. Okay, so go up here to the top. Click on the very top layer that happens to be that center picture on my setup. It might not be on yours. And then hold down a special keyboard shortcut. That's the Control, Shift, and Alt keys. And then tap the E key once. And what that does is it merges all of these layers up to one new layer right there. You can now hide all of these layers. Now an easy way to hide this is click and then drag while you're still holding down the mouse button like that. And you can get several of those hidden at one time. Now let's kind of do that just straight on down. And the reason I'm keeping all of these on here and not deleting all of them is in case when the whole thing is finished I'm not quite happy with the positions of one or two of the pictures inside the finished piece. I can then go back to these and reshuffle a little bit so it gives me that flexibility. When you finally finish the whole picture at that point you want to you can go ahead and delete these layers. But I wouldn't delete these until you finish the project and you're happy with the positioning of all of the pictures inside the project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll leave the white background open. That's okay. There we go. So there's that one layer. Now I want to keep this one protected as my background layer. Let's now take this, copy it up here, pull it up to the new layer button, make a copy. There's a copy layer. I can now hide that one. And on this layer, we'll be making our sphere effect. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put in a layer mask, a circular layer mask on this. Let's go up here to the select and the marquee tools. Change this to elliptical. Set feathering at zero right here. And on aspect, set this at fixed ratio and set it at one to one. That gives you a circle. Now come right into the middle of your middle cat. If you can't find the exact middle, let's go ahead and put in guidelines for that. Go up to view. I'll show the guides again. And let's put in a new guideline right at the three inch vertical. So new guide, vertical, three inch. There's my center point right there. Okay, bring this over that center point. Little crosshair, you can see the crosshair kind of right like that. Okay, bring it over the center point, hold the Alt key down, and then pull out from that center point. And bring it out about, about that far, so we're about a half inch, you can kind of see there it is there, about a half inch away from the edge. Just like that. So leave a little bit of space around that sphere. We're leaving the space around that because we'll be putting in a little bit of a drop shadow in there. You need some space for that drop shadow to show. Okay, there's the sphere. We have our selection, we're on the top layer here, and then click the layer mask button, and that gives us a layer mask which gives us that sphere shape. We now can hide all those guidelines again, so view and let's hide the guides. So far so good, everything is working out great. Now we can come in and begin actually playing around with the sphere effect. This is it goes pretty, pretty fast in here. Double click on the image side, make sure you're on the image side over here. Look for that light blue outline. If you don't see it, double click so you're on that image side. Go up to filter, come down here to distort, and down to spherize. And it'll be in here someplace. Just pull all the way to the right to 100%. And choose OK. And that distorts the image. That gives you that sphere effect. Notice now that our main picture is centered. In the other example, I had it so that my dividing line was centered. And this one had the main picture centered. Here's your sphere. If I bring the background up again, there's the background with the pictures just like that. So that's that kind of an effect right there. I have that just as one of our possibilities. Okay, there's the basic sphere. Notice also how it got larger. It is now larger than it was before. So again, we needed to have that space left around that, that you know, half inch space, so we didn't come up right up against that edge. There's our basic sphere. Now we can make it a little bit smaller again. Just grab one of the corners up here and pull this down. You can resize your sphere and just kind of center it. Choose OK. That looks pretty good. 
let's now put our effects onto this. So that's been fun with our effects on this sphere. First, I'll go down here to Styles. And let's go up here to Glass Buttons right there. Here's our Glass Buttons. Now in here, kind of the bottom right corner right there is called Translucent Glass. It's that one, kind of the gray one down there. Click on that, and it makes this kind of a translucent effect. It does a little bit of a shadowing on the edge over here and a little bit of a highlight up there. It's not a lot. It's just kind of subtle. Let's go back to our layers again. You'll see those little FX right here. Double click on the FX and that brings up the style settings dialog box. And here we can kind of play around with our settings. Let's first change the lighting angle. You just pull this over here to the left hand side. So kind of rotates that light around like that. I want to kind of over here to the left a little bit. I happen to like 135. I tend to use that one a lot. So 135. We have an inner glow and a bevel on this thing. And you can show and hide the bevel. There's the bevel right there. See that? And then there's the inner glow. Notice that actually isn't so much a glow as a darkening. We want to accentuate that a little bit. But first let's go to our drop shadow in here. And let's set the drop shadow at 29, 13, and 35. That's all fine. So 29, 13, 35 on the drop shadow. Just a little bit of a drop shadow right down along that edge. So that's good. Okay, our glow, inner glow. Let's change the color here. Click on that, that color. Right now it's white. I'm going to change this to black. Bottom left-hand corner. Just click in the middle someplace and drag to the bottom left-hand corner makes that inner glow black. You can kind of see that now. There it is. Kind of a dark happening in there. We have opacity. Let's go clear to 100% on that. And let's bring our size up to about, oh, about 150 or so. I'll just type that in. 150. So there it is. What that does is it darkens down that outer edge. Kind of helps to give the effect of this thing rolling around. This, with the real dark color here, works well against a darker background, which we'll be doing. If I had a lighter background, I'd probably go for a lighter color here. But with a dark background, going on the dark edges really helps out that effect. Okay, there we are. Bring our bevel back in again on top of that, so the bevel kind of lightens up the edge a bit. You can see now it's just have kind of a nice setting. Now the bevel is still a bit of a hard edge on here. So I'm going to bring the bevel up you can see as I bring that up, it, it softens it out. And you get towards the top, it begins looking like an actual sphere. So I'll set the bevel at 240, which is just about where it gets that sphere effect. And choose OK. There we are. Now that's about as far as a lot of the other videos I've seen on this take this. But we're going to do a bit more on this one, take it a bit further. Of course, we did that black coloration. That was one step further. Let's now do another kind of interesting step beyond this one. Start off here with a new layer. Click on the new layer button right there. Come down to the color. Make sure you have black in your foreground color. Go to the paint bucket and click in there and just fill that layer with black. Or you can do layer, new fill layer, solid color, and choose black. You know, either way, that's fine. Black layer. Now, go up to filter. Come down to render right here and lens flare. There's the default lens flare. This is a little cross here. You can kind of pull that around to the center. You see these little side flares? Pull all that so, it, so it's centered just like that. Just right into the center. Unfortunately, you can't get this exactly centered. You have to just kind of hand do it. But that's pretty close. Now change this down to the 105 prime. So you have a white hot spot right in the center. And set it at 100% brightness. That's fine. So there's a nice bright hotspot, 105 prime, centered on the image, and she is OK. So there's our centered hotspot. Now go back to the select tool, move tool up here. Now for the fun part, go up to filter, come down here to distort and polar coordinates. I'm going to just zoom out, little minus key there, zoom out. And there we go, rectangular to polar, right there. So here's polar to rectangle. I don't want that one. I want rectangular to polar. 
and it does this kind of interesting strange shape in there choose OK just like that now I want to have this hot spot up here we have the control handles so if you come just outside any of the control handles I'll just click on any one of these click on it and then come outside and grab that and spin that around like that or notice down here it says 134 I can actually put this at the exact same degrees that I used over here in the layer styles 135 degrees and choose OK there we go it's kind of sitting on top of this image now come down to this layer click on the layer mask look for that light blue outline if you don't see it over here double click hold the alt key down drag that up onto that layer that copies this layer mask up to here so it's exact same layer mask because so now it fits exactly on what it is underneath now I want to blend this layer into this layer which will keep my hotspot they have a couple of options on this one of them is screen let's go over here to the right layer make sure you're on the right layer double click look for your light blue outline there we go and now it's going to work for us screen let's now scroll clear down to the bottom and hide that background layer there we go and scroll back up again so that blends it in so you have these two options you have the screen which is kind of a lighter effect see there's that highlight we're getting screen is one soft light is another one now soft light allows more of the darkness around the edge and so a little bit of a highlight coming in there now if I do it with and without you can kind of see there it is without that and here it is with it see how it really accentuates all of that stuff by coming in with that soft light so it's kind of an accentuation effect in here again it's a personal choice on what you like you may like it lighter like that without this effect you might like it darker or if you want a little less than this just come in here on the opacity and you can back up the opacity a bit maybe about 50 percent about halfway in right there so it's keeping a bit brighter on your pictures but you still have a bit more of the accentuation of that sphere effect so there we go that's the basic sphere now next step we're still on this top layer make sure on the top layer right there we'll copy this again to a new layer same thing control shift alt hit the E key that copies it up there we can then hide these two layers now that that's copied I can bring the background back in again there's the background back to the top last little bit I'll put a little highlight a little specular highlight we have kind of our soft highlight and our darken of the edges that's from this layer let's now do a little highlight spot right in here so change your colors to white for your foreground go to the paintbrush I want a soft edge brush I need a real large brush so I'm just going to bring this up to about 250 should be pretty good there you go pretty good size brush you can see it right there and then come right about here just in a little bit from that edge I don't hit that cat right though so I think I'll go just off of that cat I go right there and just click it once and twice there's a little bit of a bright highlight right in there and there we go there's the basic sphere now let's put in a new background we can do the background with the graphics graphics button right there change the graphics to backgrounds and then let's just scroll down there's a nice one up pretty close here there it is that's what I used right there it's called night sky click on that that puts the night sky in and there's that sphere on the night sky now at this point go back to our layers everything is on that one layer so we get a copy of that there's our copy and I'll now take the foreground let's just pull these sides a little bit bring our size down a touch on that there we go put that right there choose OK let's go to the background here let me first uncheck the auto select layer there we go and pull the background up let's make the background a bit smaller just kind of position that up and in behind there you go so you can have some fun with that if you want to actually adding in additional spheres or whatever so there it is there is the basic photosphere effect and it works with any pictures any kind of picture you just need a whole lot of pictures to do this let me bring up the other one 
can't do it that way. I have to find it this way. Actually, right there. Here it is. Bring this in. So there's the two styles as well. So the left-hand one here, I had the guidelines set at the one-inch marks, and that gave me that division right here as the center. So kind of four pictures centered. On this one, I offset the guidelines by half inch, which gave me the one picture in the center. It's up to you which way you like better. You know, it depends upon your pictures. Two different ways to approach that. Say, aside from that one positioning of those guidelines, everything else is exactly the same. Let's finish this off with one last step. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer and Levels right there. Bring that in, there it is. And where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that's checked. Choose OK. And now we can just tweak our values on this sphere if you want. You can brighten it up a little bit right here. You can punch the darks a little bit. So this lets you come in and do just a bit of accentuation of those values, make it a bit more snappy. Brightens up just a bit. There we go. Maybe a bit too much on that. So there it is, just a, a little bit of tweaking to get these settings exactly where you want them. And close that down. So there it is without the levels, and there it is with just a little bit more contrasty on that with that levels control. So there you go. There is the photosphere. Let's just bring this up, and I'll zoom in on that. And there it is. So there is the photosphere. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.